We at Biomean strive to support animal health and performance in agriculture and also livestock production. Today I have the great opportunity to give you an insight in our research that we are doing at Biomin. Um, one of the foci are, for example, gastrointestinal diseases such as um, ruminal acidosis. So ruminal acidosis is a bovine uh, metabolic disease um, that affects feedlot and also um, dairy cattle. Ruminal acidosis is uh, generally associated with an increase or in the in ingestion of um, large amounts of highly fermentable carbohydrate rich diets. So um, this carbohydrate rich feeds basically um, result in the excessive production and also accumulation of short chain fatty acids, also especially lactic acids in the rumen. Um, which cause a drop in the ruminal pH and the potential of damaging the metabolic system. Um, there are several forms of um, ruminal acidosis, the acute ruminal, ac ruminal acidosis and the subacute ruminal acidosis. And especially in dairy cattle, the subacute form is relevant. And this is mainly caused by the change in the dairy history uh, industry that we have observed in the recent history. Um, we have observed that the number of dairy farms has uh, decreased. But at the same time, we have also an increase in the individual milk yield per animal. This increase in the individual milk yield per animal was achieved by um, genetic selection but also by a change in um, the diets from a shift from more forage uh, diets to um, grain including diets. Um, and nowadays this high performance dairy cattle require high starch diets, which in fact again um, cause the potential of subacute ruminal acidosis. So um, subacute ruminal acidosis has actually been identified as the most important nutritional disease in um, dairy cattle. And this is due to several um, facts because there is a decrease in the dry matter intake of the animals, a decrease in the um, individual milk yield of the animals and so forth, also a decrease in the productivity. At the same time, there is an increase in the culling rates and also in death and losses. So we have established that um, subacute ruminal acidosis can have a large impact on um, dairy farms and the productivity of them. I have already mentioned that um, subacute ruminal acidosis is caused by excessive amounts of highly fermentable carbohydrates in the diet. So this is mainly um, concentrate feeds that are fed to the animals. Um, in contrast to the acute um, ruminal acidosis, the subacute ruminal acidosis is caused by the increased amount or total amount of um, short chain fatty acids that are produced and accumulated in the rumen. And what we actually observe is that there is a disruption in the balance between the intake of fermentable carbohydrates uh, the buffering capacity of the rumen and the rate um, of the rumen absorption of the acids. There are several definitions um, when subacute ruminal ac ac acidosis is um, defined basically. Um, and these definitions are always based on the time under a certain pH value. We have here um, two different um, examples. For example, the first one um, is a time of 5.24 hours below a pH value of 5.8. And the second definition is um, a three hour interval below 5.6 p. 
pH in the rumen. So now that we have established that um, the subacute ruminal acidosis can have a high impact and then also um, important influence of economic losses in dairy cattle, we can now establish how we can actually um, investigate this. And one of the options that we have is to use um, the rumen simulation technique, in short, RUSITEC. Um, this is a semi-continuous in vitro model, which is well established for investigating ruminal fermentation in a standardized environment. Um, this RUSITEC allows us not only to investigate ruminal fermentation processes, but with this um, RUSITEC we can also simulate um, subacute ruminal acidosis. So you can see here um, how the system looks like. We have 12 reactors that are filled with an inoculum, which is basically the rumen fluid um, of a cow. Um, the inoculum is the same in every of the reactors. And the reactors represent our fermentation chambers. They are placed in a water bath in order to keep them in constant um, conditions and also constant under constant temperature, this um, 39 degrees. We have then also um, this continuous intake or in inflow of um, uh, synthetic saliva, which is provided via the synthetic saliva pumps that you see in the middle. Um, each reactor has one pump, and so we can continuously um, in, in, have a continuous inflow of the synthetic saliva that allows us to buffer the pH in the reactors. Um, each reactor is also um, equipped with feedbacks that are attached on electronic steerers. You can see them here on the side. Um, we keep the, the feedbacks in the reactors for 48 hours and change one of them every 24 hours. Um, this attachment on the electric steerers basically mimics um, the rumen digestion and the movement in the rumen to further um, simulate more realistic conditions. In each reactor, we also have integrated a pH probe that allows us to continuously monitor real-time observations of the pH and also automatically um, records the pH values each minute. Additionally, each um, reactor is attached to a separate gas bag so that we can collect the produced gas um, per reactor and time point. We estimate or well, quantify actually the volume of the produced gas every day and we can also investigate the different um, gas compositions, for example, um, carbon dioxide, um, oxygen and methane. So this is a small summary. Um, as I already mentioned, the Urusitec is a semi-continuous system. We can operate the system for 15 days. Um, it is equipped with the 12 reactors with a filling volume of 920 milliliters per reactor. Um, we have the continuous inflow of synthetic saliva. We have the feedbacks that we um, attach to this electronic steerers. The feedbacks are basically uh, nylon bags with a specific pore size so that the microbes are able to colonize the feed and um, basically then produce the short chain fatty acids. Um, the aggregation, I already said, is done by this rotating axis of the um, electronic steerers. We can then uh, daily sample um, the rumen fluid from each reactor. 
we can also change um, the feed. Basically, we are feeding the, the reactors like in real time. And we can do routine analyses such as the continuous um, observation of the pH, the gas volume and composition per day, the dry matter disappearance of the feedbacks in, in the in the Russe tag per day. And we can also investigate short chain fatty acids, total bacteria count, microbial um, composition and so on. So this system allows us um, to really investigate um, rumen fermentation processes. And now I would like to give you a short introduction how we actually can simulate um, SARA, so subacute ruminal acidosis with our Rositec. We have um, established a model that allows us basically this um, simulation of the conditions. So as a first step, I just give you a um, demonstration of a graph that you see for uh, dry day six until dry day 13. And you can see the pH, the mean pH of several trials that we have combined um, with six replicates, Rusitec reactors basically, um, all together. And the fat line that you see in the middle is basically the mean of all the trials and the slimmer lines on the upper and lower ends are the confidence intervals. So this basically follows a normal physiological condition where we feed the animals a high fiber diet and normal buffer concentration. When we want to induce a SARA challenge, um, we can change the buffer concentration and the diet from high fiber to a high starch diet. And we do this basically from day six on, and we can observe during the next three to four days, a continuous drop in these SARA reactors. So this is again, um, the fat line in red, which are the mean pH values of several studies that we have conducted. Um, as you can see during the first two to three days, there is a transition period where the pH drops. And then from day nine approximately, we have a stable condition, um, which is significantly lower than the normal physiological conditions, if you compare it to the green line, for example. So I just want to give you a quick um, insight in how actually the pH value looks like within 24 hours um, within this measuring measurement period. And basically it looks like that. So we have again the pH um, curves in this measurement time that is indicated by the box. And you can really see now the pH values that are measured every minute for each of the reactors. So the green reactors are again the physiological um, normal conditions and the red reactors are indicated as our SARA challenged reactors. Um, you can see here the peaks indicate generally the opening of a reactor and the placement of a new feedback. After the placement of the feedback, the microbials um, colonize the feed and short chain fatty acids are produced. This causes the slight drop in the pH that you can see in between the two peaks. And after the continuous um, inflow of the buffer solution, the synthetic saliva, you can see an increase in the pH before we open again the reactor here on the next day and feed again. So we can really see that we have successfully established um, the SARA model where we have the continuous uh, difference between SARA challenged um, reactors from normal physiological reactors. So what can we do with this now? So this allows us actually, the, or gives us the opportunity to test various feed additives um, as a kind of acidosis prevention strategy. And we have 
from our product portfolio several um, customized orientated solutions. And just one more example that I give you um, how we can actually test one of the products. So this is one example from a trial where we tested um, a product that is applied already at the beginning from day one um, to all reactors. On day five, we change um, half of the reactors to the SARA conditions. So we change the, the diet and also the buffer concentration and the other half remains the same as before. So it was just high fiber diet and normal buffer concentration. And we can see that um, from this day six to day eight, basically we have this transition period where the buffer, uh, the pH, sorry, um, is more or less before it is um, established. And then from day eight until day 12, we have the significant difference of the SARA challenged reactors and the normal physiological reactors. And now here we can observe that even though not significant, um, the reactors that have the SARA challenge and the product here indicated as green have a significant, well, a numerical um, higher pH value than the non, um, the than the reactors without the product. So we can use these indications to further analyze um, the effects of the product, for example, in further in vivo or in vitro trials. So I thank you very much for your attention.